So we continue to read from the Saints of Radha, written by Adhika Shabdas. We've come to chapter eight. eight. Which I will do my best to read. 61 page. Thank you. Sri Bhava Navakishora Goswami and Sri Bhava Lochanandana Goswami. Madhuri Rasa, are you translating or just enjoying today? It's possible, yes, it's possible. Always possible. Thank you both for your service. Very nice. It's very hard work. We must all appreciate this very much. Sri Pada Namaki Shora Goswami and Sri Pada Lord Shanananda Goswami were the sons of Shibada Lakshmi Kanta Goswami. Rade, Rade. I'm sorry, I yes. think I I got kicked it, kick it off from from Japanese room. Can you say me again? That was not very nice of me, was it to kick you out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, uh, I don't know what happened, but sorry for stopping. Um, no, it's not a problem. Well, you should have it again now. Shripada Nava Kishora Goswami. Shripada Nava Kishora Goswami. Now it's Manduri Rasa who's kicked out. Sorry. <laughs> so it? strange. And then Ananda hopped out. English. There we are. Let's try again. Shri Pada Navaki Shora Goswami and Shri Pada Loka Lochanananda Goswami were the sons of Shri Pada Lakshmi Kanta Goswami, a descendant of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. They lived in Dhacha. Both the brothers were learned and intensely devoted. Both renounced the world in the prime of their youth and went to Vrindavana for Bhajan. They were conscious of the utter necessity of a spiritual guide and wanted to take shelter under Sida Shri Krishna Das Babaji of Govardhan. But they thought if they revealed their identity to him, he would regard them as worshipable, being the descendants of Nityananda Prabhu. 
and would not accept them as his pupils. Therefore, they told him that they belonged to a low caste and requested him to accept them as his servants and guide them in Bhattan. Krishna Dasa Baba was impressed by their sincerity and keenness. He kept them in his ashram and began to teach them Asta Kalina Lila Smarana, that is, meditation of Krishna Lila as performed during the eight parts of the day. Krishna Dasa Baba had become very old. He needed able and sincere persons like them to serve him. So he began to accept all kinds of service from them without any hesitation. They also began to render all kinds of service, even menial service, most faithfully. After some time, now is the voice still uh, bad? Uh, is the voice okay? I just see the message. It's good. Mm. After some time, their younger brother came to Govardhan in quest of them, looking for them. He went to Krishna Dasa Baba's ashram. At that time, the two brothers had gone to Manasaganga for bathing. When they returned, they saw that Sida Baba was red with anger, and their younger brother was sitting by his side. They understood that Baba was angry because he had come to know about their lineage. They fell at his feet and asked for pardon. Sita Baba said in a voice ringing with rage, you are a fraud. You have usurped my right to serve and forced your service upon me by deceit. Could there be a greater treachery than this? I never imagined that Prabhu Santana that is, descendants of Nityananda Prabhu, could be such impostors. The two brothers said, with folded hands and tears flowing from their eyes, Maharaj, we are great sinners. Birth after birth, we have been accumulating sins. It is on account of those sins that this time we are born in a family in which, by the very nature of our birth, we are removed from bhakti. Our birth and lineage on account of which 
we are we are regarded as worshipable by society have filled us with pride and rendered us ineligible for bhakti excluded from bhakti we realized that unless we came down from the high pedestal on which we have been placed by our destiny and take shelter under the feet of a Mahabhagavata, a Siddha saint, we cannot hope to attain bhakti. We knew that no one would accept us if we disclosed our identity. Therefore, we were compelled to adopt this course. We have undoubtedly committed an offense. You can now give us whatever punishment you think we deserve. Krishna Dasa Baba said, Your punishment is this. Both of you wash your feet with your own hands and give the charanamrita to me to drink. Thus, only the offense you have committed by fraudulently serving me can be expiated, can be cancelled. The Goswami brothers had to obey, though most unwillingly and painfully, in order to pacify Baba. So maybe, maybe we need some explanation. Yes. Could you do? I want to hear. <clears throat> so, uh, generally speaking, uh, in in especially in bhakti bhakti tradition, three things very powerful and important to, to advance spiritual life. One thing is washing lotus feet of Gurudev or like a senior person. And then another is remnant, eating remnant of Gurudev or some, you know, very high personality. Another thing is that the uh, foot dust of Gurudev or uh, some superior personality. So, generally speaking, junior, pers junior person age or speech advancement take senior person or Gurudev's foot dust or bathing water. So, if if we do opposite thing and then great say, offense for our spiritual life. Because generally speaking, in Indian culture, every everybody, almost everybody try to touch the feet of you or know, dust. yeah, foot dust of you know uh, mother, father, or guru dev, or you know, senior personality. This is the kind of culture. But never senior person touches a uh, junior person. So in this case, generally speaking, this disciple asked Gurudev to, to please give me your charanamrita, washing lotus feet. This is natural. But in this case, Gurudev is thinking this two disciple is descendant of Nityananda Bansha, Nityananda's family. 
means, so, Nichanan descendant is considered guru for everybody. So that means if some guru there, ordinary guru, if some Nichanan descendant come to, come to him, please give me mercy, please accept, you know, so we, we surrender to you, please accept us as your disciple. Generally speaking, this is impossible. No, you are more higher than me. How can I accept both you are descendant of Nityananda Baba? Like this, Guru thinking like this. So Guru saying, okay, please wash your feet because you are senior than I, because you are descendant of Nityananda. So you are cheating me. You know, you are low, you know, come from low, low, you know, low caste. But actually, you came the most higher caste. So now you wash your lotus feet and give me your charanamita. Means Gurudev accepting disciple is more senior personality. Then Gurudev thinking, then if I drink their charanamita, your offense will be clear. So, but for, for them, for disciple, it's so painful. It's intolerable. This is a situation. So therefore, this Guru Dev is okay, but for for them, for stu for students, both students, it's feeling so bad because we accept Sita Baba, but Sita Baba want to take our our washing, you know, foot washing water. This is for disciple, you know, intolerable. So we have to understand this kind of Indian culture or like a Vedic culture. Is Nityananda Prabhu higher caste or spiritually higher? Like I say, you know, Nityananda Prabhu, Nityananda Prabhu is like an incarnation of, yes. you know, incarnation of, say, you know, Balaram or may say Krishna the incarnation, we may say. Yes, yes. So means his descendant means, you know, Spiritual, we may think spiritual. So don't you have the don't you have the spiritual parampara and the caste system as two separate? Yes. And it says in Bhagavad Gita that Krishna says that devotion erases caste class. Yes, but general caste, you know, general caste like uh, you know, Brahmana, Kshatriya, and Vaisha and Shudra. But uh, say if we thinking. Someone who is Vishnu, Vishnu Tattva descendant is beyond caste, one sense. Yeah. Right? So, therefore, many people respect Nityananda Bansha, Nityananda descendant, or Advaita Chari descendant. So, like, uh, general people accept their naturally guru. So, therefore, Guru David's guru. Radha Gomitas Bhaj Maharaj, he, one Nichananda's uh, descendant came, he completed pay of obeisance. He asked the nation, this person. And then, actually, Radha Gomitas understood what he is the son of Nichananda. He not only gave the nation, but he gave the nation. E, even Sadhu Maharaj also, yes. you know, some, some descendant of Nityananda Khan, they also he treat very nicely. So, and uh, like, like, like Nityananda, say, so if descendant of Khan, then we, we, we have to treat like Nityai Khan, Nityananda Khan. But it's quite a a conflict that the two sons they come to Bhajan anywhere because they come from such noble, noble spiritual mm. lineage. Yes. Quite a tragedy. Yes, what do you think? What yeah, this is uh, because nobody accepts us as disciple, <laughs> and also this, uh, also say like. Uh, Maybe I, but okay. If we want to, I, I, I can only add what Krishna himself 
accepted guru. Mahaprabhu accepted guru. This is me. It's real. Even the descent of Nityananda must accept guru. <clears throat> From one sense, like this. If someone tells you, but they the sense of original guru, but Krishna also original guru. Yeah. And also say, so and Mahaprabhu is Radha Mostra. But if Baba had known, would he accept? In the story, if he had known that they were from Nityananda, would he accept them? No, no, no. So, like I say, Krishna, it is a Krishna, sometimes a Krishna's guru is Santipani Muni, mm -hmm. right? But if we check Santipani Muni is, 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 is kind of Shiva worship, mm -hmm. then the question may come, why? Krishna does not select Vaishnava Guru. Mm -hmm. This is question. <laughs> because say, if Vaishnava is there at that time, and Krishna come, who can accept Krishna as you know, student? Mm -hmm. Krishna Balaram can. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, you Guruji, please accept me. You know? And then Vaishnava could understand, oh my God, this is the Krishna Balaram, you know, this is my most powerful road. How can I accept you as my disciple? Like similarly, so, but the, if go to Shaivites, some of who worship Shiva, they don't recognize Krishna Balaram is the you know, Supreme Lord. They're thinking, okay, you know, I can accept. So it is said, uh, therefore, Krishna, <laughs> Krishna, some other select Sandipani mm. <laughs> Don't know Ishwara Puripada. Ishwara Puripada, he knows. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is probably he knows Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Bhagavan himself. But uh, he, he was thinking this kind of destiny, this kind of arrangement of his Guru Dev Madhavendra Puri. Also, he, he understood divine arrangement of Yoga Maya. This is my understanding. So you can just accept this experience. Kind of yeah. So, but uh, this time, this Sita Krishna's Baba was not like this. And also, you know, this is Mahaprabhu is is completely leader. This also we can say leader, but the uh, you know, situation different. So Baba was very humble. Sita Baba is very humble. Usually, you know, some of his Sita very humble. Mm. So you know, they don't want to accept even disciple sometimes. So what to speak, you know, some of his descendants of Nityananda family is, is very difficult to accept. Example, Narottam Thakur. Narottam Thakur was born in king family. Mm. His father was great zamindar, means Mike, land owner. Oh, no. microphone in the middle. Mm. Uh, one more example is Narottam Thakur. He was this, uh, the son of uh, king because his father was Great Zamindar in Slim. Okay, okay. Thank <laughs> you.
No. No, nemmeno noi. No sound from Mungi Mandi. Thank you. It went off when the mix fell out. Now it's good. Okay. 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 Sorry. Yes, so, okay. So we are talking. No uh, Kanata does go Sami does not want to take any disciple. And but Mahaprabhu appear in dream. Please take this Nanotam. But still. Lokanata Sugosami does not want to take disciple. But uh, Narottama Das was very sincere and uh, he was cleaning a uh, you know, toilet place. At that time, nobody cleaned it. One day he went, oh, somebody cleaning this place. Who is this? You know, and they every day clean. So Lokanata Gosami was thinking, oh, who is cleaning this place? You know, I want to see, I want to check it, check it out. So he's hiding a tree or a bush, then watching. Then Narottama came and he was like crying and cleaning the, in the place. And, the, and Lokanata Gosami heart is melt, completely shocked. Then he called Lokanata, no, Lokanata called Narottama. I accept you, please, you know, take bus. So it's not impossible. So okay. there, therefore, only one disciple. This is, uh, so, sorry, I literally deviate, but that Lokanata Gosami is story today. In this story, Krishnadas Baba, who is Siddha Baba, for him it was the moment when he is, uh, how to say, accepting the glory of Nityananda. No, oh, he is already, of course, he is so much accepting the glory of Nityananda, but in form of his two the boys who, who came to him. For him, it was important. I remember when Vyasa Puja Day came, of, I, I saw twice the words. In the case of Shri uh, Bhaktivikyan Bharati Gosami Maharaj and our Shri Gurude. Uh, in this moment, they not see the disciples. They see, for example, Shri Bhaktivikyan Bharati Gosami Maharaj told to us, I not see disciples, the followers, I see my teachers, because in their heart, the creeper of their teachers, and I see this, and I worship this in the way how I can. In that moment, he could not sit long time. He pre uh, preferred to lie down always, because he was all very old. But few hours he seated and speak with us and take from us um, our gifts, uh, working his feet like this. But for him, it was painful. He, he gave to us chance to, it was his service to us. Because he thought, I not see the followers. I, think, I see the worshipable verses for me. And uh, uh, you can add and correct me, but what I understood, the devotee who have Siddha means Prema. He considers others higher than he is. <laughs> Any good point. Anything to add from from others to share a comment or a question? I continue. The Goswami brothers had to obey. Though most unwillingly and painfully, in order to pacify Baba. Baba was pacified. He said, I am happy that Krishna gave me the company of two great persons like you. It is out of Vaishnava humility that you regarded your birth and lineage as a curse. In fact, it is due to your lineage that you are so humble and devoted. 
I do not have even a semblance of the humility and devotion you possess. I don't have a little bit of what you possess, he says. You now continue to stay in this ashram and do bhajan. I shall consider myself honored and blessed. That kind of if I say sincerely asked, uh, uh, no, we say sincerely said. So next, continue. But the Goswami brothers pleaded their inability to stay in the ashram anymore. How could they stay there to be revered by Siddha Baba and his disciples, to be respected by him, whom they revered themselves? They sought a solitary place in a remote village to the west of Kamyavana called Pasupa, and they began to live there. From time to time, they went to Kamyavana to have darshan of Siddha Sri Jai Krishna Dasa Baba. Their acquaintance with Sri Jai Krishna Dasa Baba was not new. They used to go to him for his satsang, holy company, even before they renounced the world. Sri Jai Krishna Dasa Baba was at that time a very powerful magnet of bhakti who attracted not only the sadhakas from different places, but also the deities. Once, when Navakishora Goswami had gone to stay with him for some time, he had also carried with him his deity, Sri Radha. Madana Mohana. Sri Radha Madana Mohana felt so much attracted by Baba that one night he told Navakishora Goswami in a dream, You have served me well so long. I was happy with your service. But now, I would like to stay with Jai Krishna Dasa Baba Jr. Ji, Jai Krishna Dasa Baba Ji, and accept his service. I will not go back to Dachan. I will not go back to Dhaka. Navakishore Goswami had to go back alone. Radha Ma Madana Mohanaji remained with Jai Krishna Dasa Baba. So, in going to Jai Krishna Dasa Baba, Navakishore Goswami used to feel double attraction. The attraction of Baba and the attraction of his own Takura, Sri Radha Ma Ma Madana Mohana. You want to explain? <laughs> the double attraction? 
ラブラトラクションイズ。<笑>ビコーズ、バババイズソーパーフルババ、オーソディスディティ、ディティはソー、ソー、アトラクティブ、アンダー、ソー、アタッチ、ザ、イズ、ピュア、ディボーティ、ソー、ゼフォー、ディス、ディスパーソン、えー、ナバキショル、ゴスワミ、ウェン、ヒアタッチ、ボス、ババ、エオーソ、タクリジ、エオーソ、タクリジ、イッツムス、アクセプトヒン。He likes him. And also, Baba also likes him. I think that is very nice. <laughs> Because Bhakti is not one way, both ways, like Raga and Anura. So, you know, devotee love, also deity also love, or disciple love to Gurudev, also Gurudev love to disciple. Like kind of both each other is in communication. So beautiful. We don't talk about this much. Deity love. Yes. Deity love. So, sometimes we know we don't we don't see we we want to love deity, but actually deity also loves us because of our devotion. But uh, sometimes you know we are so new fight that we don't understand, but actually deity loves us if we are very sincere and very you know pure. So beautiful. <clears throat> After some time, the Goswami brothers received the information that all the other members of their family were dead. And there was no one to look after the family deity. So they had to go back to Dhaka. At that time, the income of the family was meager, was very small. And it was difficult to carry on the service of the deity satisfactorily. The deity told them in a dream Do not bother about my service. In the village Pardabaja, in district Chatagrama, there lives a devotee who is a big landlord. Everyone in his family will soon die. No one will be left to own his property. You take me to him. My service will be performed with the income from that property. This, this is like, a, so this, this is like a talking to the devotee. To dream. To dream. This is very amazing. Means that devotee has so high consciousness and so connected. And the deity knows the heart of this, uh, what's the name? Um, Nabakishol Bosan. Yeah. And then deity suggests you can go this place and, you know, you explain to him that he can give to your, your property or you some income. He knows it's coming you to die. Don't. Yeah, you know, everybody died. So we could understand this all destiny. Sometimes we are thinking, you know, we can live very long, you know, or sometimes, you know, by like a medical arrangement, you know, we can live longer. But it seems, you know, all destiny. Krishna Mohan knows, You know, if you go to this place, you know, you can get everything. This is really amazing. Both the brothers then took their deity to the landlord 
and told him about the dream. He gladly transferred all his property to the deity by a deed and appointed the two brothers as servants or servitors. The service of the deity began to be performed in the right royal manner. Sankirtans and festivals were frequently held and prashad was given to all and sundry, to all the different kinds of people. The two brothers had renounced the world for bhajan, but they were brought back to the world by the will of Krishna. Did this in any way block their progress in bhakti? It did not. For the world in which they now lived was the world of Krishna. Jai Ho. Wow. Yeah. This is amazing. Really nice. Yeah, could you explain? Well, we've often said that we need the material body to do devotional service. And that is exactly what the brothers are doing by serving the deities in the Sadika Vesh. Their material existence lets them serve Krishna, lets them serve the deities. What would not be possible in their spiritual identities alone. Once he realized the shine which is coming from Shimataradika photo seed, and you can see this everywhere in this world. And he told, I could not see anything, but I can enjoy it because I see everything as the length of the He could he told, I could not see anything separated from her. She was everywhere. <laughs> it's not my realization, but my friend told me like this. Yeah, actually, someone who is a spiritual consciousness person, then they, you know, and uh, that person could see even material world become spiritual world because they have eye to see. So, because everyone thinking, oh, this belongs to everything for Radharan or Radharan Seva. Like, like before, I say, oh, my, my disciple is actually my guru's manifestation. So similarly, everything even looks like material, but all emanate from, you know, rather energy. So all the service they're doing for deities is emanating from spiritual world. Yes, the kind of, you know, it 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 it, it is difficult to discriminate. This is material, this is spiritual. Someone who is very high spiritual consciousness, everything becomes spiritual. Or well, every devotee is like a very high devotee. Only myself is wrong. This kind of vision is, uh, you know, it is a coming. So therefore, this 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 devotee, this world also looks like a spiritual world because they are only seeking this path of Krishna, deity pleasure, mm -hmm. and everything belongs to deity. So I want to use everything for the pleasure of deity. So it, 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 it doesn't matter we are spiritual one or, you know, like a material one, just a matter of consciousness. So this whole property is mm. kind of highly spiritual yes. energy. Yes. Um, once uh, Shukurdev told us, mm. I have to spend a few uh, years, five years, so to understand the words of my Guruji when he told Antaranga become Bhattaranga. Means internal, internal energy, spiritual energy was transformed into external energy, material energy. And what does it mean? Once 
uh, uh, disciples of Shunaranga Samaharaj asked him, they tried to make this famous uh, posture of uh, material and spiritual words. Mm. And they ask, where exactly is uh, Tatasa region located? And he told, no, such location not exist. It is a question of consciousness. He told, everything is a question of consciousness. It's not a place. It's not a place, he told, it's, everything is a question of consciousness. We can sit here and be in material world. If consciousness is changing, we will see just the playground of Sri Radha and Krishna, because uh, uh, the grandfather of our Guru Dev saw this place as a meeting place of Radha and Krishna. And everything is consciousness. If my consciousness um, so much uh, involved in gross matter, means desire to enjoy this matter, then what I see, Shanaranga Samaraj thought, in this case, you will see, not Hapurja, you will see just stone or metal. This means your heart is metal or stone mm. because of desire to enjoy. You couldn't enjoy something if it's equal to you or higher even. You can enjoy only if low means without consciousness. This world looks like no consciousness. It's like dead matter. It looks like this because of desire of Jew to enjoy. And Maya Shakti giving this illusion. But this is matter. This is not uh, living, but everything that is exists is just Krishna consciousness, nothing else. We live it inside of Krishna consciousness. Now you will like what follows. Did this in any way block the progress in bhakti? It did not. For the world in which they now lived was the world of Krishna. They lived and breathed in the world of Krishna, for Krishna. Therefore, they continued to rise in bhakti, in stages, until the stage of accomplishment, Siddhavasta, was reached. This is evidence from one or two episodes in the life of Lochanandana Prabhu, which are well known. Quite something. So this space is turned into energy of Krishna at this property where they're serving the deities. So the episodes here. Once Lochanandana Prabhu Lokanandra Lokanandra was invited to a Samkirtan at the house of Sri Kartika Adhikari, a famous physician of Fardabhaja. Lokanandra was dancing in the Samkirtan. Suddenly, overpowered by a fit of emotion of Bhav, he ran out of the house and disappeared. Even after the Samkirtan was over, he did not return. Adhikari, Adhikariji, got the whole of Chatagrama searched, but he was not found anywhere. The second day, a wider search was organized. People were sent to Navadvipa, Nilachala, and Vrindava. On the fourth day, Adhikariji was sitting with a number of devotees in his drawing room. He saw that some cows had assembled around the garbage pit in front of the house. Some of them, standing at the edge of the pit, 
were looking amazedly at something below. Some seemed to be smelling something in the pit, and some, intoxicated with the smell, were dancing in an exalted mood with their tails turned upwards. This aroused the curiosity of Adhikariji and others. They went near the pit and saw the body of a man buried in the garbage, head downwards. Whose body could it be? They pulled it out of the garbage. Oh, Lochanananda Prabhu, they shouted in astonishment. Lochanananda Prabhu had run away from the Samkirtan in a state of trance and fell into the pit. After Samkirtan, there was a feast of about 500 people who were served on plantain leaves the leaves were the remnants of food which were thrown into the pit. These had covered his entire body. Cows had gone into the pit to eat the leaves and the food. In the process, his feet were uncovered. They started smelling and licking the feet, these cows. This filled them with such an exaltation, such an excitement, that they went out of the pit and started dancing in ecstasy, the cows. <laughs> the body of Lochanandana. Lochananda, 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 Prabhu was washed, but there was no sign of life in it. Everyone began to mourn his death. Everyone was sorry that a saintly person like him should have had that kind of end. But Adhikariji, who was not only a competent physician, but also an advanced devotee, examined the body carefully and said, Prabhuji is not dead. If he was dead, his body could not remain fresh even after three days. He asked everyone to perform kirtan. As soon as kirtan was started, Prabhu stood up and began to dance in ecstasy as before. When he came to his own, people asked him now how he ran away from the samkirtan and lay in the garbage for three days. He said that he knew nothing about it. Sita Kunda Chandranata, a place in district Chattagrama, is famous for the temple of Sambunata and the Shambunata. <clears throat> and the 15 days long fair held there on the occasion of the Shiva Chaturdasi. Shiva Chaturdasi is Shivaratri. Generally speaking, we say Shivaratri. Shiva Chivaratri. Thousands of sadhus and pilgrims attended the fair. The gate of the temple is opened 
at midnight for darshan, once Lochanananda Prabhu went there with a number of devotees. At midnight, when he was going with the devotees for the darshan of Sambunata, he met a yogi Shwara near Vyashakunda and the temple of Kalabhava ba, Barava, Baraiva. He was tall and fat. His black body was smeared with ashes. A garland of bones hung around his neck. His long, yellow, colored, matted hair touched his feet. He wore a tripundatilak on his forehead and his eyes scintillated like balls of fire. The devotees were frightened to see him. But he fell prostrate before Lochanananda Prabhu and supplicated and begged, My Lord, I am the presiding deity of this place. My name is Kala Bhairava. I have been accepting the sins of people. Thereby, I have myself become heavily burdened with sins. I have been anxiously awaiting your arrival here for my deliverance. Kindly have mercy on me. Lochanananda Prabhu gave Krishna mantra to him. He again prostrated reverentially before him, offered a gold mohur at his feet, and then disappeared. Or appear in this uh, Lochanananda Pablo. He thinks it. Hmm? He thinks it. The, the sadhu. No, 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 no. Lord Shiva or Lord Shiva expansion appear kind of from BT. From BT. Lord Shiva or Lord Shiva expansion appear. In front of this, this Rochana yeah. Nanda Prabhu. As Kalabara. Yes, yes, yes. Kalabara's expansion yes. of Shiva. Yes. And then he said, because many people coming to worship, I accept to sing. Then I'm overburdened. But the seeing the pure devotee, this, this burden will disappear. So, therefore, this Lord Shiva's expansion. And uh, asking, please deliver me. Huh. And then that Lotharana Prabhu gave Krishna mantra to him. This is really, you know, amazing. To story. Shiva. To Shiva, what well, mm. actually Shiva's expansion. This is, <laughs> this is really, because like uh, demigods is like a uh, Vaishnava. Demigods also Vaishnava, Shiva is also Vaishnava in Atashambhu. But uh, if they see great devotee, and they're very happy. I don't know this case, but uh, you know, usually Shiva has, you know, Shiva, she knows some mantra, but uh, this case, Shiva asking the mercy, and then <coughs> this Rachanana Prabhu gave Krishna mantra. Because <coughs> Shalanga Samaraj explained, I don't know about his script, but mm. how it's possible. <coughs> Shalanga Samaraj explained what mm. Shiva Tattva is very complicated. Mm. It means uh, contain many tattvas mm. uh, together, like and Jiva Tattva also inside of Shiva Tattva. 
And he explained what does it mean. He told sometime the Jiva can get the position, not Shiva itself, but his expansion as a Rudra. That Rudra, who, for example, who is destroying the world. A kind of Rudra? Mm -hmm. Rudra. Yeah, she, and Shiva is very, like Shiva's treating mode of ignorance, even though he's a very high, exalted personality, he does not have, a, you know, almost nothing, no material desire, mm -hmm. but still he's taking care of, you know, ignorant people. So even, even say one story, uh, Ganga, I think one devotee, Bhagirata. Bhagirata is, 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 uh, Bhagirata's ancestor was commit offense to Vaishnava. And then, actually, Kapila Dev, Kapila Dev, the thing the Kapila Dev, he became ashes. And then he went and, so how to my ancestor, which become ash, become your offense. So how how can he deliver? Then that uh, person said, if if Ganga water touch this ash, that that your ancestor will be delivered. Means and liber get the liberation. Then so and then he was. Thinking so, how to how to uh, bring Gangadia from heavenly planet to to, to material world? Yeah, no, in, in this world. And then he did so much tapasya, and then Ganga Devi appear, and then he asked, "Please come to in this material world." Then Ganga said, "No." At first, he, he had two conditions. No, actually, he said, she said, no. Why? No. Because many people come in this, in this planet. Many simple person bathe in, in my water. I'm overburdened by their sin. Oh. You know, so what to do? Then just Bhagirata said, no, that's true. But also pure devotee will bathe you. Then your burden will disappear. He said like this. Also, he said, you know, my current is so strong. If I come directly, then, you know, your eyes become, you know, out of the kind of, you know. Out of the great calamity. Yeah, great calamity. You know, us again onto the Galbonaka ocean, something like that. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, Shiva could hold your current. Then, and then you come like this. So what I want to say is, so even Ganga water, she feels, oh, I'm overburdened with stain. So he, in this case, Shiva or Shiva's incarnation, this is Kara Bhairava. He also, he was overburdened. So he met the devotee. So he's, uh, he's asking that, that the mercy. Then devotee gave Krishna mantra, and then Lord Shiva, this kind of Karabhairava, is so happy. Mm -hmm. This is very interesting. Uh, also, show something that some explain in the Bhagavata Amrita that uh, those, uh, uh, when it's possible for Shiva to become Shiva's expansion. Yeah. That's After 100 lives of Brahma, in Shiva uh, fulfilling, uh, fulfilling duties of Brahma. 100 times then receiving atikara means capacity to be expansion of shiva oh, this but is nothing about bhakti pure bhakti this is mean even so high position but then pure devotee coming he can help like i say ordinary world say if we practice varanashram dharma perfectly 100 lifetimes then become he get the Brahman position. Yes, 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 Patricia. Mm. So he you mentioned that if Brahma like hundred times <laughs> properly, you know, that's and then he get the kind of expansion shiva. This is amazing. But 
y ya no te entra espiritual grande. No, it's very. Any other sharing or wait? Hey, Kumi. Hello. Any other sharing or question or comment? <clears throat> In Paradabhaja, <clears throat> there was a river about half a mile from the house of Adhikariji. Lochanananda Prabhu used to go to that river for bathing every morning. Once the village was afflicted with cholera, one day, when Lochanananda Prabhu was returning from the river after bath, a fiendish old lady emitting foul smell from her body touched his feet in, obeyance, uh, in obeisance. He burst out with anger. Who are you? Dirty and despicable lady, you have spoiled the water I was carrying from the river for the deity by touching me. The lady trembled with fear. She said with folded hands, Prabhu, I am a great sinner. My only function is to kill innocent people. Besides, I have committed an offense by touching your holy feet. I do not know what my fate is going to be. But who are you? shouted Lochananda, Lochananda Prabhu. I am Vishuchika Devi, the goddess of cholera replied the old lady. Lotanananda Prabhu took pity on her and gave her Harinam. Then she said, Prabhu, you are my guru. It is my duty to make some offering to you. What offering should I make? You leave the village immediately and never come here again. This is the only offering I can accept. The lady obeyed. Lotanananda Prabhu again went to the river and bathed. On his return, he told Adhikariji, your village is now free from the scourge of cholera for all times. Surprisingly, all the cholera patients in the village recovered immediately. And not once since then has anyone in the village suffered from cholera. What is more, patients of cholera from other villages are also cured on coming here. After some time, both Sripada Nada Kishora Goswami Prabhu and Sripada Luchanananda Goswami Prabhu went to Jagannatha Puri at the time of Rata Yatra. Shiripada Navakishora Goswami Prabhu left the body while having Jagannathaji's darshan at the time of Rata Yatra. 
Lord Chinananda Prabhu then sat at the feet of the dead body and said, Prabhu, you kept me with you like the very shadow of your body since birth. Will you now leave me alone? With this, he, left, he also left his body and followed the elder brother to Nityadama, the eternal abode of Radha and Krishna. And that completes the, the story of Sripad and Navakishwara Goswami. We have arrived in 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Yes. It's in the car. Mm -hmm. Oh. Wow. Oh, it's same good name. Okay, let us keep continue with okay. it. <laughs> this Jagannatha Dasi Babaji story is quite famous. Yes. Especially for us. Unfortunately, it's a bit long. I don't complete. No, no, it's okay. Half it is okay. You know, one side also okay. So now we continue with very a very famous story yeah. about Sri Jagannatha Dasa Baba, Babaji. <coughs> Sri Jagannath Dasa Babaji had a long span of life. He lived for 147 years. 147 years. He used to stay for six months in Braja and six months in Navadvipa. He was known throughout Bengal and Raja as Asida Purusa. Once, when he was in Navadvipa, Gopinataraya and Janakanataraya, two self conceited landlords, arrogant landlords of Bhagyakula, went to see him. They said to him, Baba, we are told that you are Sida Parusa. Show us some miracle. <laughs> what? Who told you that I am Sida? As Baba said this, he tapped his stick against the ground several times. Let us go. Baba is angry, said the frightened landlords, and they began to leave. No, no, I am not angry. I was only trying to drive away a she-goat who was eating up the Tulasi plant in Lokanatha Goswami's Kunja in Radhakund, <laughs> Baba said humbly. The landlords were surprised. How could Baba see and drive away an animal hundreds of miles away? Immediately, they sent a reply paid telegram to someone in Radhakund to seek confirmation of the episode. The reply was, that a she-goat had actually eaten up the Tulasi plant in Lokanatha Goswami Kunja that day. The landlords again went to Baba and apologized for their arrogance. 
when they had gone, when they had gone, Baba said to Binari, Bihari, his disciple, poor souls of Kali, they would not believe without seeing. I showed them something so that they might not suffer on account of any offense against me. The landlords were fools to have tested Baba's accomplishment as a saint by asking him to show a miracle. Baba's Siddha state was obvious. He was himself a miracle. He was at that time 125 years old. His body was bent like a semicircle. His long brows hung before his eyes like curtains. He could hardly walk. If he had to go anywhere, his disciple Bihari had to carry him on his shoulders. Still, his stamina in bhajan was unique. He would do japa almost throughout the night. In the morning, he would perform a thousand dandavats before the deities. He would often fast continually for three days without even drinking water. He would offer tulasi leaves to Girihari with the help of two of his two disciples who would stand on either side of him and lift his brows with their hands to enable him <clears throat> to do so. In Sankirtan, he would dance and sing, and while dancing, jump up to four feet above the ground in ecstasy. The great saints do not like to exhibit their power of performing miracles, but they are, but they are sometimes compelled to do so in order to instill fate, faith in skeptical minds or to relieve someone who is suffering out of mercy. Jagannatha Dasa Baba also had to do this sometimes. Once the entire Navadvipa was flooded, almost everyone had to quit. But Baba did not. Bihari, who was his only attendant at that time, fell seriously ill. Piyari Mohana Goswami of Mahaprabhu's temple called a doctor from Calcutta. The doctor pronounced his condition as very critical. He said the patient would die before daybreak. Lala Babu called his Kaviraja. He also confirmed what the doctor had said. Then Baba said, all right, I will see who takes Bihari away from me. He sat near his bed and began to do japa. After half an hour, Bihari opened his eyes and said, Baba, I'm very hungry. Baba immediately cooked some Mohana Boga and he gave it to him to eat. After he had eaten, Baba asked him to go and cook for the deity. Bihari took his bath and began to cook. Bihari was a Vrajavas. <clears throat> he did not know Bengali. But Baba asked him to read Chaitanya Charitamrita every day so that he could listen. 
He said, Baba, I do not know Bengali. But Baba asked him to purchase a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which he did. He then asked him to read. Bihari only looked vacantly at his face. He said angrily, don't look at me, look at the book. Bihari began to look at the book. And to his surprise, he found that he was able to read. Chaitanya Charitamrita, like one who had already learned Bengali and studied Charitamrita so well. Similarly, Baba said to Bihari one day, Bihari, I shall sing. You accompany me, accompany me on the Muranga. Bihari said, Baba, I have never even touched a Muranga. How can I play on it? There is no harm in trying, said Baba. <laughs> so Baba started singing, and Babi Bihari took up the Murdanga. And lo, he was playing it like an expert. The Sita saints sometimes perform miracles even, even without knowing or willing. In the state of bhav or ecstasy, brought about by stimulation of the sentiment of divine love, miracles happen automatically. Because in that state, the saint is in tune with the Lord, the infinite source of inconceivable power or energy. Achintya. Sakti, that transcends the power or en that transcends the laws of nature or science. This happened in the case of Baba on numerous occasions. Once a Kirtan party passed by the side of the cottage in Navad Navadvipa. On hearing the Kirtan, Baba asked Bihari to take him near the party. Bihari at once lifted him on his shoulders and took him there. Baba laid himself prostrate before the party in obeisance. Soon after, the kirtan song filled him with such ecstasy that he stood up and began to sing and dance with the party. He was no more the bent-up old man who had been carried by Bihari on his shoulders. He was walking along with the party and singing and dancing with him. As he sang and danced, he leapt two or three feet above the ground in ecstasy. And sometimes fell unconscious on the road. Since the road was under repairs and scattered with small pieces of stone all over, the fall bruised his body, but he was absolutely unaware of it. When he thus fell unconscious, the devotees sang kirtan close to his ears. Then he regained consciousness and again started walking, singing and dancing as if nothing had happened. Bhav is contagious. Baba's Bhav touched the hearts of the members of the party like electric current. And they were also lost in ecstasy. 
their movements, therefore, became slow. They took six hours to cover the distance from Baba's cottage to the banyan tree in Niranigata, where they stopped. Baba was all the time walking with them and dancing, jumping in a state of trance. Baba had practiced a long course of sadhana to attain this state. He always had stoic apathy to the world, and he was completely free from attachment. He would not even touch money. Once Bihari was carrying him somewhere on his shoulders, a rich man offered him a rupee. Baba asked Bihari to put it in his pocket. After Bihari had gone about a mile, Baba asked him to turn back and go again into the house of the man who had offered the rupee. On reaching there, he called the man and said, please take back your rupee. I am told you have thousands of rupees. I could not bear the bite of a single rupee. I wonder how you bear the bite of so many rupees. The rupee was with Bihari, but was biting Baba. Because he had touched it mentally by asking him to keep it. Baba lived like an ascetic. His diet was strictly regulated. During the four months of the rainy season, he took in the first month only four bananas in the evening. In the second month, guavas. In the third month, whey. And in the fourth month, boiled banana flowers without salt. Baba once went to Shrikesha for Mantra Purasharana. Bihari went with him. During Purasharana, he got up at three. This is Purasharana. 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 A special kind of sadhana. He got up at 3 a.m., took his bath closed the door of his room and sat down for Japa till the evening. Throughout this period, he observed silence and did not eat or drink anything. If he had to go for urination or even if he passed wind, he stopped Japa and bathed before resuming it. In the evening, he took Havishyana, boiled rice with ghee. After two months, one day he saw a tree laden with too many fruits. He was excited and said to Bihari, Bihari, look how many fruits on this tree. This broke his silence, and he had to restart Purusha, Purashcharana from the beginning. 
After three months, he had the darshan of Gaur and Nittai. This is how he became Sita. He used to say that if one wants to see Garanga Mahaprabhu or Sri Krishna in, in this life, he should do Puraschararana. Pur, pur, Puraschararana. Siddha saints are self willed and fearless. They live in a world of their own and do what they like, caring little for what others will say. Once, when Baba was in Vrindavan, he asked a sweeper to give him a roti to eat. The, the sweeper said, why cut a joke with me, Baba? No, not a joke. I am very hungry. But I'm a sweeper. How can you eat bread from my hand? What of that? You are a sweeper of Vrindavan. A sweeper of Vrindavan is superior even to Brahmins. The sweeper could not disobey a saint like Baba. Reluct reluctantly, he gave a roti to him, and he ate it. Bihari was watching this with dismay. He said, what have you done, Baba? Society will treat you like an outcast. It will be difficult for you to stay in Vrindavan. Baba only smiled. News spread like wildfire throughout Vrindavan that Baba had eaten a sweeper's roti. Soon came Nilamani Goswami, Radhika Nata Goswami, Gaur Siromani, Gaur Sundaraya, and other dignitaries of Vrindavan in a delegation. Baba asked Bihari to give them an ashana, to sit. They seated themselves, but kept looking at each other for some time. For no one could muster courage to say anything. Baba said, I know why you have come. Why not speak out your mind? Then they said in a submissive tone, Baba, you are the crest jewel. I think we stop and go out for Gurudev now. <laughs> <laughs>